Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Abhinaya, I am a consultant pediatrician. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about how will you manage a UGI bleed in children. So, what is first an upper gastrointestinal bleed? So, any bleeding which happens proximal to the ligament of traits, that is the UGI bleed. So, how does it manifest? It can manifest either as hematemesis or melina. So, what is hematemesis? Hematemesis means vomiting of altered blood. The blood gets altered due to the presence of acid. So, vomit, vomiting of dark blood or coffee colored blood or it can present as melina. Melina is a black tarry stools. So, the etiology will depend on the age of the child. Okay, it will be different for a neonate, it will be different for an infant, it will be different for a child or an adolescent. In neonate, if there is a hematemesis, first of all, you should rule out two important things. One is rule out swallowed maternal blood and another one rule out the vitamin K deficient bleeding that is hemorrhagic disease of newborn. So, rule out those two disorders first. Then there can be a stress gastritis or ulcer. Okay. So, there can be a trauma because of the insertion of nasogastric tube, esophagitis or any vascular anomalies and rule out coagulopathy next. Okay. And any, these are some of the anatomical disorders like gastrointestinal duplication, a gastric duplication or a duodenal duplication cyst etc. can be there. But this will be found out only on imaging. Okay. And rule out milk protein intolerance. Ask for history of uh, feeding. Did the family give anything other than human milk? So, that history has to be asked. And any coagulation factor deficiency. Of course, when you do a coagulogram, you will get an idea. So, this is for the neonate. Come to the infant. So, for infant, think of all these first. Okay. So, stress ulcers or an acid peptic disease. Okay. Next will be Mallory V step. Was there any forceful retching when the child was doing, when the child was vomiting? Okay. So, Mallory V step. That can be a result of, okay, any esophagitis, any vascular anomalies or duplications. Then further down again, milk protein allergies, duodenal gastric webs, duplications, etc. has to be thought of. For a child, of course, this acid peptic disease, H. pylori disease and drugs like NSAIDs induced ulcers, rule out varices. Okay. These are most common. Okay. Most commonly when you get a child with UGI bleed, child or adolescent with UGI bleed, you have to definitely think of variceal bleeding. Okay. And these two, very, very important. Ask for history of any foreign body ingestion, especially button batteries, especially these toddlers, preschoolers, caustic ingestion, okay, any alkali ingestion, coercive poisoning as a attempt to suicide. Many of the times we do not ask, suddenly they will present with UGI, suddenly they will present with hematemesis, okay, and then only on probing the child or adolescent, they come up with, okay, I drank this. So, very shocking nowadays, even a 8 year old, 9 year old kid. Yeah. So, ask the history. Okay. Further down, Crohn's disease, yes, vasculitis, any bowel obstruction, delophy lesions, etc. So, remember the common etiologies, that is enough. Okay. So, first coming to the management. One thing is, if the child presents to you with UJ bleeding, first thing is the resuscitation. Okay. Take care of the airway breathing circulation. Do the vital assessment quickly. Is the child hemodynamically stable or hemodynamically unstable? So, that is what our concern is first. Etiology is next. First is resuscitation. Okay. So, you do your uh, quick assessment ABC. You take the vital signs. You will know if it is stable, if the child is stable or unstable by now. Then, investigate. So, first investigations will be of course CBC. You will do a full coagulogram. RFT, LFT, you send blood grouping for you said blood for grouping and cross matching. Okay. Then further investigations. First in the emergency room, you can do a chest x-ray and abdominal x-ray. Okay. In chest x-ray and abdominal x-ray, your foreign body will be ruled out like a button battery. Right. You do a, a, a ABG, arterial blood gas. 
or if it's not available you can do a venous blood gas assess the ph lactate level etc so you, when you are doing the initial assessment when you are resuscitating the child you can inform the pediatric gastroenterologist or pediatric surgeon at your hospital then focused history you get the parents you ask them how was the hematemesis so the quantity if they are able to quantify ask them how was the hematemesis was there any melina how long has this been going any drug history is the child taking nsaids like aspirin if it is a neonate if the newborn presents to you with bleeding on day 7 to day 10 okay so the classic hdn ask whether the vitamin k was given at birth so our number one concern is portal hypertension or liver disease is it presenting with esophageal varices so history suggest of any liver disease or portal hypertension can be asked any history of corrosive ingestion yes and button battery yes we have done the x-ray okay so there is a massive bleed here okay this is a massive bleed hemodynamically the child is unstable so now what are you going to do okay so immediately you secure the airway if the child is unstable you can intubate or supplemental oxygen is enough always two large bore cannulas very very important okay then you resuscitate the child with fluids age appropriate if there is shock ns saline boluses have to be given and then in uh, whenever there is shock and whenever the child is hypovolemic only you are going to give the fluids okay if it is a variceal bleeding what happens when you are hyperhydrating okay too much of fluids when it is given all the varices are going to get filled with the fluid and that will cause variceal bleeding once again okay that will dislodge the clot also so um, you will have to be very careful when you are giving iv fluids and uh, if inotropes are necessary place a central line and if there is a large bleed and shock you have given saline boluses you have started on inotropes bleeding is continued you know that there is a massive transfusion you go for transfusions okay transfusion for a massive bleed will be 1 is to 1 is to 1 what is this 1 is to 1 is to 1 1 unit of prbc 1 unit of ffp and 1 unit of platelets have to be given to the child whenever you do a blood transfusion you should carefully monitor the electrolytes so hyperkalemia hypocalcemia hypothermia is another metabolic condition that can occur when you do a massive blood transfusion okay so monitor for all these once you know that this is a okay sometimes a child with chronic liver disease or a portal hypertension who is on regular follow up to you you know this is due to portal hypertension because of variceal bleeding so you can start octreotide first you give a bolus and then you give an infusion you start iv pantoprazole for the child give vitamin k iv and maintain the child nil per oral and start the iv maintenance fluid this is for your variceal bleeding okay so if there is so this is a variceal bleeding i'll come okay this is for an even though you have done all the basic management okay you have uh, done npo fluids everything you have done but still the blood loss is ongoing or there is severe bleeding you can do an endoscopy for banding sclerotherapy with or without adrenaline or if endoscopy is not possible with the help of an interventional radiologist you can do embolization of the bleeding artery or you can take up the child for surgery to control the bleeding right so if it is a variceal bleeding okay you start with octreotide bolus then infusion still the uh, bleeding is not controlled on octreotide uh, infusion then you can consider a balloon tamponade okay but balloon tamponade this has to be just an emergency procedure you should not keep the balloon for more than 12 hours in the kids after that you have to definitely go for an endoscopic variceal ligation so you are going to give an octreotide infusion the dose for octreotide infusion will be you given 1 to 2 mics per kg iv bolus you give and then you follow with it follow it up with a continuous infusion at 1 to 2 mics per kg per hour we can continue to 24 to 48 hours maximum will be 4 mics you should dilute octreotide in half dns pantoprazole that is ppi is also started the dose is age wise and dose sometimes you can you can give it weight based also 
So, the initial bolus for a 5 to 15 kg child will be 2 mg per kg per dose IV and then IV infusion will be 0.2 mg per kg per hour. So, this is the age group that we are going to see commonly, isn't it? So, remember the dose. Maximal duration will be 72 hours. By this time, okay, by 24 to 48 hours, definitely it will be controlled. Pantoprazole also for 72 hours you can give. So, by this time, most of the UGA bleeds will be controlled, okay. But you should identify the etiology for the UGA bleed and then manage the child conservatively and to prevent the recurrence of UGA bleed, further prophylaxis has to be given. So, all the prophylaxis about uh, UGA bleed and uh, portal hypertension, I have discussed in the portal hypertension chapter in detail. Okay, so you should definitely go through that chapter. I have discussed that uh, very vast. Okay, so the portal hypertension, UGA bleed, etc. It's a very vast discussion in that video. So, please do check out that video also. Okay. So, this is a very short discussion on UGA bleed. So, because in theory exams, uh, you have this question repeatedly. How do you approach an UGA bleed or you have, you are given a case history. Okay, so and so age child is come, has come to you, has come to the pediatric emergency with the hematemesis. So, how are you going to approach? So, from the approach, you have to start. See if the parameters are given. How is the child hemodynamically stable or unstable? How are you going to resuscitate? What is the pertaining history that you are going to ask? Depending on the age of the child, you should have the differentials in your mind and what are the investigations that you are going to do. If the UGA bleed is controlled, what you are going to do? If it is uncontrolled, what you are going to do? If it is a variceal bleed, what is the prophylaxis that you are going to do and all? You can write. Okay. So, I hope this uh, presentation was uh, easily understandable and very helpful for all of you. Thank you.